Learn how you can help fuel the adventures by visiting www.primal-outdoors.com and clicking on Ways to Support. folks so we are parked on a road uh, outside of Bend Oregon that will be very familiar to most people who live in the area we are on China Hat Road and this is going to be the starting point to a little desert overland trip that I have planned for the Kia Telluride um, I want to get the Kia out and do some kind of more legitimate overland trip so this will be two to three days and it's going to be all via dirt track now I don't necessarily have an end destination in mind. I know I want to kind of end up in Southeast Oregon, but uh, I don't really have a specific destination that I plan on going to. But I do want to just get out into some desert area and just try to cover as much as I, area as I can, you know, via, you know, like an overland style trip, you know, all dirt tracks and uh, just, you know, see how things go. So we're finally starting to get out into some BLM. The first part of this trip has been mainly through National Forest. Now I could have hopped on Highway 20 and drove east out of Bend and jumped right into the uh, high desert area from there, but I really wanted to start this trip right out of Bend, so I took China Hat Road, which took me through quite a bit of National Forest, but like I said, now we're starting to pop out more into the type of terrain that we'll be kind of in for the rest of this trip. I really wanted this to be a desert adventure, but like I said, uh, there might be some, some national forests that we drive through a little bit here and there, but for the most part, this is gonna be high desert from here on out for the next three or four days. I think I found a place that we're going to settle in for tonight. Um, it's tucked into some trees. We're in some junipers and that will provide some nice cover. Uh, the wind is blowing a little bit, but not too bad. It's actually kind of making uh, it just a little bit cooler. It's been a hot day today and plus I can just tell that the day itself is starting to cool down. So it's actually fairly pleasant right now. But <clears throat> it is 630, so I feel like that, uh, that should give me a couple hours of daylight left. Uh, and I can kind of, you know, set up the trailer, uh, have some time to make dinner and everything, and then settle in for the evening. So I set up the awning, not because I'm worried about it raining. Uh, it's a beautiful day out. This time I set it up because it'll just provide some really nice shade. So I've also picked up some new gear. I got the uh, Timbo Test Scottle. Uh, 
This is what I'm gonna start using, I think, instead of my cast iron skillet and the stove. Um, I've been cooking on it a few nights already and I, I really like it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get this thing set up because I'm hungry and uh, we're gonna get some dinner going. This smells really good. I got this um, marinated meat at the grocery store. It was already pre-marinated. And uh, this adding some peppers, onions, and uh, a little serrano pepper for some heat. And man, yeah, it smells delicious. Looks like, too, that we are all done. Another beautiful day ahead of us, it looks like. Uh, just gonna make some coffee here. Um, what I'm doing is just reheating yesterday's coffee. I still had quite a bit left from yesterday. And I often do this um, not only because it conserves uh, coffee and um, makes my coffee last longer, but especially when I'm out doing these desert trips like this and water's kinda at a premium, this kinda helps me um, conserve the amount of water I'm using on the trip so uh, yeah we're just going to heat this heat this yesterday's coffee right back up which will be totally fine and uh, have a cup of coffee Good buddy, you like that? Yeah. All right. You guys clean that up for me. This is how you do dishes in the desert. Right, guys so it's already starting to get really hot out here so before I start off on this epic overland and journey I want to make sure we don't have an epic bonfire Kia bonfire out in the middle of the desert 
So uh, we drove through a lot of overgrowth yesterday and that overgrowth can get hung up. Uh, seedlings, little things like that can get hung up underneath the vehicle. So I'm going to um, get underneath, do a little inspection, and I've also got out uh, my air hose and everything so that I can um, hook up to the ARB air compressor and work on blowing out any seeds or anything that could be possibly hung up underneath the car that could eventually cause um, a, a uh, engine fire or car fire. So um, as cool as that is, it's already been done before, so uh, we don't want it to happen on this trip. Alright guys, so I've been driving along here and I had seen some water, different water holes on the Gaia GPS. Uh, I figured most of them would be dried up, but this one here actually still has water. There's water in this one and then just over this hump there's still a little bit of water over here. Uh, definitely a place that the cows are coming to. You can tell the water is very murky and muddy and definitely not a source of water that I think is going to be usable for me at all. Uh, I wouldn't even you know, want to put this in the road shower or use it, it's just mud, but I guess if you were in a complete emergency survival situation, you could try to figure out some way to uh, utilize this water, but um, I've got plenty of water on the vehicle, so uh, we're just going to keep moving on. So far, this track has been fairly mild, fairly easy driving, uh, fair, uh, not really aggressive dirt roads, just a lot of uh, you know great terrain, uh, lots of views, really beautiful drive, and you know to me that's what overlanding is about. It's not about going out and trying to tackle the most aggressive and tough uh, terrain that you can come up with. You know, to me, it's about just getting out and getting out in the backcountry and covering some beautiful territory. Now, it doesn't mean that along the way you might uh, not encounter some uh, some aggressive terrain. And so, I do feel like an overland vehicle definitely has to be able to handle uh, you know different different terrain. But I also feel like an overland vehicle needs to be a vehicle that's well mannered on the road too. So. Because uh, a lot of times we find ourselves driving for uh, you know a long periods on highways and byways to even get to where maybe a, a trail system or something that we want to we want to drive will get to, and then on top of that, an overland vehicle has to be suited to carry quite a bit of gear because you're going to have all your camp gear, whether you know whether you're using a trailer like I am or you're using a rooftop tent or a, or a ground tent or something like that. You're also going to have other gear. You're going to have to have plenty of water. Like, you know, I have 10 gallons of water on the car right now on top of extra fuel that's being carried in the trailer. And then all my, you know, refrigerator and stuff for the dogs and, and the dogs and everything like that. So, you know, there's a lot of things to consider, you know, when it comes to an overland vehicle. But 
I think a lot of people want to immediately assume that an overland vehicle should be an off-road vehicle and to me it should you know it needs to teeter somewhere in the middle of, of you know good daily driving you know on-road vehicle road tripping vehicle and a adequate and uh, very capable off-road vehicle and depending on you know how you want to spend your time out when you are overlanding you're gonna fall you're gonna build your vehicle to fall somewhere in between there but anyways those are my thoughts on it I'd love to hear what you guys have to say uh, down in the comments of what you guys feel like uh, an overland vehicle should be uh, of course be nice you know and a lot of people can get kind of excitable on these types of subjects but you know I definitely would love your guys's opinion so leave those down in the comments Guys, well, I ran into a bit of a snag. Uh, I saw on the map that I was coming up on some private land, but the road looked like it went through and continued on to BLM. But there is a no trespassing sign, so I'm going to have to turn around and, um, you know, kind of see if I can find another route around around this property. So, but you know, this is kind of how it is. Uh, sometimes they let you pass through, and as long as you stay on the road, you're fine. Um, but sometimes they have no trespassing signs and you have to abide that. So yeah, we're going to turn around and uh, see if we can find another route out of here. To a lot of people, the, all they're probably seeing right now is a big, dry, lifeless desert, a wasteland. But I absolutely love this wide open country. I love being able to see for as far as I can see. And as the sun is setting right now, it is just laying a beautiful golden light over the sage that looks just like, makes it look just like a field of gold. Uh, to me, that's worth more than all the gold in Fort Knox. We're very lucky to have all this public land to be able to travel and explore. Uh, the, the last couple of days have just been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed myself today. Uh, putting we, We've got a total so far of about 107 miles that we've traveled. And it's just been amazing to me that I've been able to cover that much ground with very little time on pavement. In fact, that out of that 107 miles, I'd say maybe 1% of that was actually on pavement. The rest of it has been on dirt track. So really, really amazing. As far as I'm concerned, if you're in a situation where you have nowhere you have to be, then you might as well be in the middle of nowhere.
right guys, so we've made it to the Christmas Valley sand dunes. I think this will be a great place to end this overland adventure. Uh, the sand dunes is a kind of an off-road park where people can come with their off-road vehicles and be able to go out in the dunes and rip around and have a good time. So I think this makes a, a perfect ending uh, to a overland trip like this because you can actually camp here and then be able to have a day just out enjoying the dunes and having a good time. Uh, as far as uh, people interested in the track I took to get from Bend all the way to here, uh, it was, you know, according to my guy at GPS, uh, we covered about 116 miles off-road tracks. If you're interested in that GPX file, I will be uploading it to my patrons on Patreon. So definitely check out that if, you're, if you'd like to get a hold of the track and be able to follow along the same route that I took. Uh, you can do that uh, by becoming a, a member of my Patreon. So. But anyways, yeah, the Kia did great, uh, great track. Um, you know, not like I said in, earlier in the video, not overly aggressive, but uh, you know, there was a few rocky sections here and there and, and places where the trail was fairly tight and a little bit overgrown, so. Uh, you know, but overall, just a really great trip through some really beautiful country and we got to actually finish it off uh, today by going through the uh, Lost Forest Research Area which is just outside the dunes and that's kind of an area where like pine forest meets desert and uh, there's just a cool mixture of pine trees and sage and it's just a really kind of a uh, beautiful little area to go through but um, again kind of a nice little ending to the trip. Uh, and and true overlanding tradition, you know, we in, no overland trip would be complete. We also woke up this morning to a flat tire. Uh, I was just getting ready to hop in the car and get going for the morning, and realized that the uh, front driver's side tire was flat. And uh, but again, it was it wasn't a big deal, minor inconvenience. You know, we, I had all the gear. We got full size spare jack tools. It just took me a few minutes to swap tires and get on the road. So. Yeah, like what, what overland adventure is complete without without a flat tire? I mean, I kind of feel like I got to eat my cake and eat, or have my cake and eat it too. So anyhow, well, if you guys enjoyed this trip, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I'd definitely like to do some more stuff like this. So again, leave me some feedback down in the comments and we'll catch you guys again outside. Yeah.